The ambush in Dallas took an emotional toll on first responders as well, and also on the medical teams that treated the wounded. So we go back to Gail at Dallas Police Headquarters. Gail? Yes, Charlie and Nora, we are here. I just have to say something about what you were saying about the chief. Everybody here is describing him as the epitome of leadership, that this man is a rock star. He has his own personal story, but he is clearly devoted to this city, and he is very loved and respected here. But as you mentioned, Parkland Hospital is where seven wounded police officers were taken. Doctors Alexander Eastman and Brian Williams are both trauma surgeons there who help save lives. Dr. Eastman, as it turns out, is also a lieutenant in the Dallas Police Department. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Gail. Brian, I wanted to start with you because when you first came, Alex, of course, you have been here before, but this was the first time that you've seen this memorial and you had a moment. What were you thinking when you arrived and saw it? I just, in my mind, I was thinking, why did this happen? Yeah. And, I'm, and then I just start replaying Thursday night. This, this shouldn't. This shouldn't be here. Yeah. We all feel that, Brian. And I, I so felt you yesterday at the news at the press conference when we're all watching you. I know you did too, Alex. Because you said for you, you've been here before, you're a, Dallas, you're a police officer as well, but yet you're also straddling both worlds as a police officer and as a doctor. No Tell us about that. But, you know, Gail, I think um, when you have something like this happens, when something like this happens in your city, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you're charged with, both of us have spent the better part of the last two decades of our lives training and preparing and taking care of everyone who comes to our doors, no matter what race, color, creed, doesn't matter. And certainly when you work at a place like Parkland, where we really do what we do there without respect to race, ability to pay, doesn't matter. We take care of everyone that comes to the door. To be faced with something like this it, it is truly horrific. And I think But when you're seen, in the operating room. But, but for us, you know, again, and, and part of what we do here, and uh, when you is, and one of the reasons why we wanted to come talk to you this morning is that we really feel like we have something to contribute to the conversation. And there's been a lot of talk about race, and there's been a lot of talk about how different we are. Police, civilian, black, white, and, and you know, I think Brian and I are a great example. We could not be any closer friends, brothers, colleagues. And so when you step to the operating room ta table, Gail, there's no, and you look down into someone who's hurt and injured, uh, we all bleed the same. There's no difference. We're all pink on the inside. And I think that's really an important message to get out, that we've got to stop this. We cannot continue this cycle of violence and gun violence and protesters versus police. At the end of the day, those people all look the same on the inside. And Brian, many people were touched with you yesterday because you said that this is personal and it's complicated for you, what is happening in your city today. Yes. Tell us about that. So, uh, first, I need to apologize for losing my composure no, no, no. earlier. No, you shouldn't apologize for that. I think it sends such a strong and powerful message about how many people are feeling. Don't apologize for your feelings. Go ahead. So I, I want to stand in the middle. Sure. I want to stand next to Brian. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Everybody it's, wants to stand everybody next to Brian. Wants to stand next yeah, to Brian. Go ahead. It's, it's personal for me because I understand how black men feel with their encounters with police officers, but also many police officers who are my friends and colleagues. So I'm straddling both worlds. I respect police officers. I respect mainly the job they do. Every day they go out their lives on the lines for us. They're certainly overworked, underpaid, and unrecognized. And I certainly think that that should be addressed. But I also do not want the fact that black men are dying in the hands of police ignored, overlooked, and dismissed. This is not blaming anyone. This is not choosing sides. This is about just acknowledging that it is happening and it does exist. And we need to talk about this to make some kind of change. 
And the, and the two of you are longtime friends. I heard you say yesterday that you go on vacations together, that your wives are friends, but yet even the two of you are having difficult conversations or conversations that you've never had before. I think, Gail, when you come from a different perspective, um, it, it, it's, it helps us that we come to that with a strong base and foundation, that we, we love each other. Yeah, we, I can we, tell that. we would do anything for each other, and, and that's not hyperbole at all. Mm -hmm. And we have done things for each other. So we come at the conversation from that base. And so to begin there gives us a starting point. And that's why I hope that across America, people will realize that there's a lot more that we have in common yeah. than we don't. Yeah. And it's really important, I think, as we move forward with this conversation. And what do you hope, Brian, that we will all get out of this? The previous discussions between Dr. Eastman and I regarding law enforcement incidents, they remain, they remain at a pretty superficial level. Yeah. There's a lot of joking back and, back and forth. Uh, but certainly now, if you become much more serious and deep. Okay, thank you very much for joining us this morning, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Nora, Charlie, back to you in the studio. Gail, wonderful interview. Yeah. You know, Dr. Brown Williams sums up the nation's dilemma, and I assume that that's the dilemma that President Obama will speak to today and mm -hmm. former President Bush as well. Yeah. You know, they were there. I mean, Dr. Williams was in charge mm -hmm. of the operating room when they brought in those police officers, and I think the reason that he choked up there with Gail was because, as he talked about yesterday, he was unable to save many of their lives. They were too, too badly wounded. They were there on the front lines. But he's also speaking beyond the role of a surgeon because, as he said, he's straddling that role. And he said, too, yesterday that as a surgeon and as a black man, when he sees a police officer, he tries to pick up their tab at yeah. lunch, buys them a piece of ice cream. And I think that's a message that all of us can remember and hopefully emulate. And the friendship between the two of them. Yeah. Very nicely said. Thank you, Gail.